All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thanks again for joining me this afternoon. I'm out on an overnight in Burbank, and I appreciate you tuning in and keeping me company uh, on the road here. So, the topic of today's discussion is going to be the pressurization section of the overhead panel here, where we left off last time. So. As always, um, I'm just going to start and give you some kind of high-level conceptual things that I wanted to kind of discuss as it relates to the system on the airplane and you know, just some you know, general principles about how it works and what it does for us there. And then we'll kind of come back, tie it together, and talk about the buttons themselves and the lights and things and uh, wrap it up today uh, with just a few little data points after that. So uh, just from the, the very start, while I'm talking here, I'm going to bring up uh, just the synoptic page on the Airbus that just kind of shows us the cabin pressurization uh, indications that we would see up in the flight deck if we, we brought this screen up here. So like I said, just right off the bat, you know, let's talk about this concept of pressurization, um, you know, just in general. I mean, you know, you might be curious yourself, well, well, why do we even need to pressurize the airplane or what's this all about? You know, obviously the, the concept here is that, you know, an airplane, you know, that goes from a, uh, you know, close to the ground level, so to speak, and goes up very high in the, the atmosphere, um, needs to have breathable air for everybody on the airplane. And if you, you know, think about you know, just the, the geology, if you will, or just the composition of the atmosphere as it exists on the Earth here, I mean, gravity has a way of settling you know, most of the air particles down you know, close to the, the ground. So you know, we're all you know, well and good. You know, we're, we're walking around anywhere from about sea level up to maybe you know, 10 to 15,000 feet you know, in, in some extreme cases. Uh, but for most of us, you know, we're used to breathing, you know, air somewhere, you know, down around 5,000 feet and lower. And, you know, this air at this elevation or altitude um, is dense enough so that, it, you know, we're able to, to get enough oxygen into our bloodstreams to allow our body to, to continue to function. But, you know, once again, if you, you know, think about, like I started to say there about the composition of the Earth's atmosphere and all those, like, the, the density of the particles that settle near to the Earth, you, know, you go up, you know, high into the atmosphere, the density of the, the air is just, you know, so much less to the point where, you know, it should be obvious to you probably at this point, but, you know, a human being cannot exist up in this high altitude environment and, and have enough oxygen uh, to continue to, you know, power all the body systems and everything. So it's kind of why, you know, just right off the bat, you know, the reason why we have the pressurization system on the airplane. So, you know, basically what we're doing is we are, I guess you could say in a way like simulating or, or not necessarily simulating, but actually like creating a, a more dense air atmosphere inside the little pressure vessel that is the aircraft cabin for the purpose, like I said, of allowing people to breathe and, you know, maintaining their bodily functions as, as is necessary with the oxygen there. So hopefully that makes sense to you. And, you know, when we start to talk about, you know, the pressurization system, some of it can be a little bit technical, but I was thinking of a way to try to break it down and make it like just as simple as possible for you to kind of understand like some of the key elements um, on the airplane and how it works for us and whatnot. So, you know, you might've seen this analogy used before, but, you know, just, you know, let's, let's take this water bottle here and let's just assume this water bottle um, is our, uh, the cabin of our airplane or the pressure vessel. And, you know, all the people are obviously, you know, would be, would be sitting inside there as we fly this thing around. Um, and let me, you know, just kind of make a few other analogies right off the bat. I mean, let's let's assume that the the nostrils of my nose uh, indicate, you know, the the two big intakes, uh, you know, in front of the engines where the air is actually entering, you know, the aircraft or the engines in this case. That you know, as we you know, kind of talked about in a few other other uh, discussions we had there, we know this air, you know, kind of makes its way down the line and you know gets you know processed through the packs and all this kind of stuff and condition and you know fed into the cabin eventually. So. Like I said, you know, the, the nostrils of my nose symbolize the engine air intakes. Um, let's suppose that my lungs symbolize the packs or the pressurization and air conditioning units. So, you know, I, I intake the air from the outside atmosphere. I, you know, use my lungs to, you know, kind of compress it or, you know, pressurize it a little bit and, you know, change the temperature, if you will. And then I would use my mouth to then exhaust this air like into the bottle. And, you know, that's kind of the analogy of, you know, pumping this, like I said, this, this outside air, you know, atmospheric air that goes through the aircraft systems and routes into the, the cabin. And then um, you can't really see it because this is obviously um, the, the camera here is kind of small, but there's a little hole uh, kind of in the back of the, um, the water bottle here. And that just symbolizes like our outflow valve. So if you, you imagine, you know, an airplane, um, you know, fuselage or cabin is much like this, this water bottle in the sense that it's, it's actually like constantly under a continuous leak of air, you will. So you, 
if you will. So you're, you're pumping in pressurized air into the front to get it to, you know, blow up to, you know, whatever, you know, pressure you determine you need in here to allow people to breathe. And you're um, using this little hole in the back. And, you know, let me build on that analogy too and just say that like my finger, like as it kind of covers up and, you know, uh, allows a bigger and smaller opening in this hole, you know, if I was blowing air into it, it kind of meters the air, allows like, you know, more air to leave during certain scenarios and more air to stay inside the bottle during other scenarios. So, you know, hopefully this kind of just kind of paints like a high level picture for you guys about just, you know, the real basic concept about how a pressurization system works on an airplane and, you know, what it does for us. So, uh, like I said, hopefully that one makes sense to you. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions if, if any of that didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't come across uh, as logical to you. So um, back to the Airbus though in specific, um, high level stuff, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the different modes of operation that we have available to us. So you know, there's, there's basically three modes that we can use in the Air, or on the Airbus and it's um, the automatic mode, the semi-automatic mode and the manual mode. And as you would assume, you know, the, the top level, like the, the full automatic mode is, you know, the one that we operate in during, you know, most, most of the time we're flying the airplane around. And that, I mean, it's, it's a brilliant system. The plane like literally does everything for you so, to the point where you don't need to touch anything on the pressurization panel, you know, from flight to flight, you know, as you progress to the different phases, you know, take off landing and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's just really easy. And, you know, basically what the plane does is it, um, it pulls uh, landing elevation data out of the, um, the FMGS or like the, the nav database essentially for the arrival airport that we tell it we're going to. And uh, it, it uses this information to kind of sequence everything from takeoff to cruise to landing. And, you know, like I said, it does everything for you. Um, in the semi-automatic mode, it works mostly the same with one small exception. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about it when we come back to the, the view of the buttons there. But just in the semi-automatic mode, I mean, all the valves and everything get sequenced automatically, as you assume. But just the, um, the portion of the system that, um, you know, takes the landing elevation uh, from the, the flight management system there. Let's say you were going to an airport that just wasn't in the database, so the plane didn't know what the elevation was that it was going to land at. Um, you could actually program this in manually and just tell the plane, you know, hey, I'm, you know, flying up to a certain you know, elevation of airport, you know, wherever you're going to. So pretty straightforward there. And then uh, in the manual mode, um, that's actually where we can take control of the outflow valve ourselves and just kind of command like a vertical speed, either up or down, or, you know, try to uh, target a, uh, a zero vertical speed, if you will, to just try to maintain the cabin at a certain uh, cabin altitude that we're trying to attain for whatever situation uh, we're trying to do. So um, as you assume, you know, the, the manual mode and, and even the semi-automatic mode on, you know, most, you know, flights like everywhere in the world, I'd, I'd say at any airline anyways, are, are very rarely used. And, you know, the, the manual one is, is only used in the case of, you know, if something was malfunctioning in, in one of those automatic modes there and you had to, you know, just kind of to try to get control of the, the cabin pressurization um, by yourself to, you know, you, you could use this, uh, this uh, type of operation with the system, if you will. So... Uh, let's snap back and come back to the the graphic here and just you know talk about some of the buttons on the overhead here and you know, we'll we'll take a look and you know, I'll tell you exactly what we're we're looking at there. Uh, let's see here. So zooming back in on our overhead here, just um, you know just moving right to or I'm sorry left to right. Let's start you know with that direction here. The the first one that we have on the left here is the uh, the manual or vert or um, yeah manual vertical speed control. So it's just like a a spring-loaded three-position switch. You know, so you have to hold it in the either up or down position, and it just kind of spring-loads back to the the middle position. And you know, basically, like we were just talking about a moment ago, you would actually use this button to just kind of control the outflow valve and you know, command a different vertical speed if you wanted the cabin to climb or descend. Um, you know, this is how you could accomplish that. Uh, the mode selector button, as you would imagine, um, it always stays in the the pushed in or the auto mode, like all you know, most of the other. Uh, you know, buttons that we have in the overhead there anyways. And if you were to, to push it out, you would tell the system that you wanted to use the manual mode. And then you'd be able to use, you know, the manual vertical speed control button here. And uh, you would also, um, you know, moving over to the right here, you, you uh, would utilize this, um, the landing elevation, uh, you know, knob here. And this is, you know, kind of like we said a moment ago, if the, um, if the airplane, you know, basically didn't have an airport in the database uh, or airport elevation uh, information anyways in the database, you could actually use this, this landing elevation knob here to just kind of tell it, um, and this is, you know, set in like thousands of feet, 
um, you know, just where you're intending to land the airplane at and where the, uh, the cabin altitude should end up at, essentially, when the, uh, when the flight is all concluded. Uh, the next button on the, or to the right of that is actually, I, I think, kind of an interesting one. I've never seen a button like this on another aircraft. It's the ditching push button switch. And we'll kind of break this down and talk about exactly what it does for us. But while I'm talking about that, I'll bring up a, uh, a famous picture of one I'm sure you guys, like, you know, you're probably aware of, you've probably seen. But of course, this is, you know, U.S. Airways 1549 from the Miracle on the Hudson story. I'm sure everybody out there watching this knows exactly what happened. Uh, pretty remarkable, you know, thing obviously that that happened. But um, Airbus, uh, they, you know, figured at some point, you know, that, you know, this, of course, you know, is always like kind of a possibility that could happen to any airline or fly anywhere. But you know, they they realized like, hey, you know, we've got all these openings on the outside of the airplane that you know, specifically sit below below the theoretical like float line of where the fuselage might come to rest if an aircraft actually has to ditch. So they they uh, incorporated this button into the design to just give the pilots a really quick way to kind of seal off like the bottom side of the, the belly of the, the airplane or the openings anyways and just give the thing a better chance at survival I guess you'd say in the sense that it you know theoretically would allow it to float you know for a longer period of time and this is of course like a switch that's going to be manipulated you know as part of an emergency procedure there's actually a ditching checklist um, that you can go through if you know god forbid you're ever in this type of situation um, you know, you, you would manipulate the switch as part of uh, that procedure there, you know, kind of preparing to, to ditch an airplane into the water. And, you know, very specifically, when you push the, the uh, this ditching push, push button switch, it does a number of things for us. So, number one, it, it closes the outflow valve. Uh, it will close the emergency ram air inlet door. Uh, the avionics ventilation and extract uh, valves will close and the pack flow control valves will uh, close themselves. So once again, you know, kind of the idea here is that we're just, you know, we're, we're taking the, the leakable hole, so to speak, out of the bottom of the airplane and, and like I said, giving it uh, a better chance at floating for as long as possible. And, you know, the, the reason why I actually found a couple different pictures of Sully's aircraft here in the water and the reason why I picked this one is, you know, just to call your attention to something. Um, this photo was taken, I, I want to say, like hours after this actual event had happened. And as you can see, I mean, this plane is still floating, like amazingly. I mean, I would have thought that the thing would have been completely, you know, submerged at some point, you know, much sooner than this, you know, after doing, you know, water landing. It's just kind of a testament to how well this thing actually can float if it's landed, you know, appropriately. And uh, it's just, you know, kind of a, an interesting thing, like I said, to call to your attention. Um, just, you know, this, this fact about how floatable the, uh, the Airbus cabin is, uh, so to speak. So um, just wanted to kind of tie up and, you know, just, just to show you a few kind of random things. Uh, first of all, I, I took a few photos for you guys. Just to, I wanted to show you a close-up of the outflow valve. So you might be kind of curious what it looks like when you're actually, you know, standing up close to it. It's actually kind of a, there's a, it's a two-part door. I'm not sure why exactly uh, it's designed this way, probably for redundancy, but um, that's just what it looks like close up. And, and like we said, you know, this is basically this outflow valve is, you know, bringing it back to that, the analogy that I made for you with the, the water bottle. I mean, this is that little calibrated leak or controllable leak, let's say, that's actually, you know, designed into the airplane. And this is the, the valve that's actually modulating, you know, or, or seeking to do different things with our cabin pressurization. Either, you know, you, it would be closed off if you're seeking to like maintain or, you know, preserve the pressure inside the cabin and of course it's going to open up if you're trying to relieve the pressure inside the cabin and change the the cabin elevation once again or, or the cabin altitude and um, one thing also that i'll tell you it's actually interesting about uh, this door a uh, couple things so there's actually three motors that can operate this door um, there's two motors for the automatic modes and we actually have like two different cabin pressurization uh, computers that kind of monitor everything on the airplane as far as the pressurization is concerned. So there's, there's two motors for that and there's actually a standalone motor for when we talked about that manual mode and you're actually using that little toggle switch or the spring loaded switch up in the overhead there that will actually, um, that can actually drive this, this outflow valve here. So you can see, you know, this is obviously a very important piece of equipment on the airplane and you know just like everything else that's designed on the thing uh, you have some level of redundancy in the form of these these motors here like i said so just uh, kind of an interesting thing i wanted to point out to you guys um, i just also wanted to show you just you know some of the indications that we're looking at you know we're cruising around you know any normal flight you know we 
you know, for, for most of the time we're up at altitude, we just have this cruise page up. And this is, this is kind of neat because Airbus has kind of, you know, sought to, you know, just combine a lot of different pieces of data that they thought mo might be most vital to us, like in a general cruising, you know, scenario. So it's kind of a, a, a mixture of different uh, portions of data that we can kind of take a closer look at. I'll, I'll show you the synoptic page for the cabin pressurization system in a moment, but just wanted to call your attention, you know, just down to the um, the lower right hand section here. This kind of tells us a little bit about what the pressurization is doing specifically. Um, so just, you know, right off the bat, we can tell a couple things about what the system is doing for us right now. So right now it's, it's in the full auto mode. Uh, the landing elevation has been plucked out of the FMGS or yeah, the, the flight management guidance controls computer system there, the, or the box, uh, most simply put. Um, you have, uh, you know, the landing elevation, it's determined at 400 feet, so that's what this is telling us here. Uh, the delta P is the uh, pressure differential, so the, the differential and pressure inside the, um, you know, the cabin or the pressure vessel itself to, you know, what's going on outside of the airplane. Uh, and the uh, cabin vertical speed, you know, what, what it's doing in, in any given, you know, second is, you know, right here it's indicating the cabin is climbing at 400 feet per minute. And uh, down here, just the cabin altitude just tells us, you know, where exactly the cabin is at this point in time. So right now we, we have air inside the airplane that, you know, is about 6,200 feet, um, you know, so uh, just some kind of straightforward specific stuff there or talking about it. Um, one little sidebar, this is, this is kind of a, um, I don't want to, you know, go too far off topic today, but just, you know, to call, call your attention to this, this business here about the delta P, so the differential uh, pressure. So, you know, if you, you think about our, our aircraft cabin once again, there, there's actually, you know, we're up at altitude and we're flying around, there's actually a significant amount of force, like, you know, pushing, you know, from the inside, like towards the outside walls of the airplane in a way because we have this pressurized air. Um, inside the cabin. So, you know, we, you know, later on or at a different point in time, we could talk about, you know, the reason why it's, you know, nearly impossible to open a door, let's say, while the cabin is pressurized. I mean, if you think about, you did the math about, you know, this, this, these 7.9 pounds per square inch. I mean, if you picture like every square inch on that door and you imagine like how many, you know, hundreds or thousands of square inches, you know, just the door itself might, might, you know, be comprised of as far as like the face of the surface there. I mean, it's just a tremendous amount of force that's like pushing on the door, let's say in this instance. So if you've ever been kind of worried about, you know, whether or not, you know, how how likely is it is for a, a door or one of those overwing exits to, to open while you're you're in flight or, or even for a human to like pull one of them open. I mean, it's virtually impossible just because of the level of force that's occurring inside the airplane. So just, like I said, a real kind of sidebar uh, comment, but just something I thought about um, when we're talking about the Delta P there. And the last screen we'll bring up and talk about here is just the, um, the, the actual uh, opened up synoptic page for the cabin pressurization here. So, you know, once again, we, we kind of have, you know, similar indications to what we saw on the cruise page there, but, you know, they just kind of made some fancy graphics for us and gave us some dials and needles and things to just kind of, you know, take a, take a visual snapshot about what's going on. Um, one thing I can tell you too is it, it is pretty typical for most of the altitudes that we cruise at in the Airbus. You know, we're we're up somewhere like on an average day. You know, let's say between 35 and 38,000 feet. Uh, the cabin uh, is usually up somewhere around 8,000 feet. So, you know, once again, if you know, very very simple concept. If this doesn't make sense to you, I mean, you know, this this concept of the cabin altitude is like. Imagine if you were standing on a mountaintop that was 8,000 feet high. I mean, that's like the density of air that you would be breathing in. That's kind of, if that term doesn't make sense to you, I mean, that's what we're talking about when we talk about the, the cabin elevation or the cabin altitude. So hopefully, excuse me, that's, that's logical to you guys. And uh, just below that, uh, we just, you know, have a few indications about, you know, these are the avionics, um, you know, the, the, the valves that we kind of mentioned there a little bit. Um, earlier we talked about the ditching push button switch there and we'll talk about these later on down the line when we get to this portion of the system but uh, this is just showing us that those valves are closed um, the outflow valve in this you know position here is mostly closed and if you, you zoom in really quick you can see that um, you know there's there's just this little bit of opening here and that's just like our our calibrated leak where like you know essentially the cabin is always kind of leaking you know to some small extent, but we're just, you know, filling the air like back up inside the airplane to maintain that pressurization. 
So just, just kind of something interesting to call your, your attention to there. And then there's these safety valves that are built into the system so that if something did happen and there was a blockage, um, you know, let's say that um, the pressure like wasn't able to relieve itself for some reason, there's these safety valves. They're just kind of like these spring-loaded like cap-looking things like on the, uh, the bulkheads of the pressure vessel. They're actually designed to just open up like at a certain um, pressure that the manufacturers determine whatever... Um, is, is the place where they've designed it so that, it, you know, the, the pressure, or excuse me, the safety valves will actually give way before like the fuselage cracked or something extreme happened like that. So just kind of a, um, an interesting, uh, you know, portion of the system there uh, to talk about. So that kind of covers all the indications and all the things that we we're kind of, you know, able to see in the flight deck. And um, just one little small like, like bonus thing I, I thought to talk about today is just um, kind of an interesting thing that happens uh, every time you go out and fly with a, a new person or like day one of the trip, you know, most of the time the captain is going to, you know, you're going to have some kind of conversation with him and he's going to say, Hey, you know, do you want to fly this leg? Do you want to fly that leg? And a lot of the times, like most of us are just, you know, kind of in a way like, you know, generally passive people. So we're like, oh, I don't care. Like who flies this leg? Who flies that leg? I don't know. You want to fly, you know, the first one, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So um, I've seen a couple captains do this. It's kind of a funny thing, but uh, this is kind of our coin toss. If you know you're like, hey, you know, whose legs it going to be? You'll open up to the the cabin pressurization page, and whether um, you're on system two or system one, um, these are just the cabin pressurization computers or the controllers rather. Um, they actually alternate every time the plane makes a landing, so it switches from system one to system two. Um, you know, but for us jumping into the airplane, it's kind of a random selection or just kind of like a, like I said, a coin toss as to whose side it's on. So, uh, you know, one of my favorite captains that I was flying with the other day, this did this to me and, you know, we were just having this small little dialogue about like, oh, well, I guess it's your leg because it's on system two here at this point in time. So that settled that. So, uh, like I said, just a really small little sidebar, uh, story to tell you guys about. So. Uh, once again, I really appreciate you tuning in. If you like what you hear, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, I didn't get any questions uh, this uh, last couple days here since I made the last video, so uh, no Q&A for today. But uh, as always, um, appreciate you guys watching. Until the next time, have a great day.